Hi, I'm Camille, a software engineer on the Flutter team. Today, I'm here to show you how to get a reliable and consistent camera experience on Android with Flutter and Camera X. By the end of this talk, you're going to want to run, not walk, to your terminal and upgrade the camera plugin in your Flutter app to the latest version, or add the camera plugin to your app if you're not using it already. Before you know it, you'll be using the new implementation of the Flutter camera plugin on Android built with Camera X. Why did we choose to support Camera X? How do your users benefit from Camera X? And how exactly can you make sure your app makes use of all of these benefits? Stick around to find out. The Android world is super excited about Camera X, and the camera plugin makes Flutter and Camera X a picture perfect match. And I'm here to show you why. First, let's get into an overview on Camera X and why it's a major upgrade for camera apps on Android. If you've tried native Android camera development, then you probably know that it can be tricky. That's because the pool of devices to consider during development is vast. There are so many different Android devices running different versions of the OS. What this means for camera development is that you have to handle any device-specific nuances to maintain consistent behavior across devices. You have to consider how the capabilities of the user's device may impact aspect ratio, orientation, rotation, preview size, and image size. Android's Camera 2, a low-level camera package that provides in-depth control over complex camera use cases, helps developers tackle these nuances by providing in-depth control. However, with in-depth control comes great responsibility. Camera 2 requires you to manage device-specific configurations on your own. The previous implementation of the Flutter camera plugin on Android is built with Camera 2. So the plugin has lots of logic scattered throughout to handle device-specific needs. Now, imagine a world where these device-specific configurations are no longer required. This world is possible with Camera X. Camera X is a Jetpack library built on top of Camera 2 with the purpose of making camera development easier and camera behavior consistent across devices. It streamlines the process for developing consistent camera behavior by handling most device-specific nuances on its own. In that way, it lets you focus on implementing core camera features without having to worry about the low-level controls. In turn, it will give your app's users a more reliable camera experience, no matter the device. Empowering Flutter developers to create high-quality camera experiences like this on Android was a natural choice. And that's why we built Camera Android Camera X. This package name is kind of a tongue twister, so for the rest of this talk, we'll call it the Camera X plugin. Now, let's zoom in a bit and get into exactly what your users will get by opting into the Camera X plugin. There are two main perks you'll get from opting in, automatic selection and fixes for device quirks. First, we'll cover automatic selection and how it significantly improves image resolution selection. Automatic selection is the Camera X way of automatically providing functionality based on the user's device, like determining the best resolution or aspect ratio for images if they're not specified or those specified are unavailable. Selecting the right resolution for images that your app uses is important, whether it be to improve overall app quality or for the requirements of your use case, like needing a high resolution to accurately scan or analyze images. However, in the case where your target resolution is unavailable, it can be difficult to achieve the next best resolution, especially when the capabilities of the user's device are unknown. In fact, y'all in the Flutter community have told us that this is a difficulty that you often face with the previous Camera 2 plugin. Camera X eases this problem by providing automatic resolution selection. This is a game changer because as a developer, 
you can trust that Camera X will perform a best effort attempt to target your specified resolution or fall back in a reliable way. To give you a better idea of how it works, let's look at the difference between how resolution selection works in the Camera 2 plugin versus the Camera X plugin. Consider the case where a developer wants to target a 4K resolution, which matches the Flutter resolution preset ultra high, but this resolution is not available on the device where their app is running. In the Camera 2 plugin, we handle resolution selection for images with logic that looks something like this. Since the developer wants to target ultra high resolution, we will first check if that resolution is available on the device. We know it's not, so it continues to fall back to the next highest resolution until a supported resolution is hopefully found. The logic here is reasonable for finding the next best resolution if the desired one is unavailable, but it can be unreliable. That's because when running on legacy hardware level Android devices, it's a known issue that the call to camcorder profile has profile, which checks if a resolution on a device is available, has the potential to return true, even if the resolution is not actually supported. So although this logic is performing a best effort attempt to choose the next highest available resolution, it can be inconsistent across devices. In the new Camera X plugin, our logic for selecting a resolution looks something like this. Instead of checking if the desired ultra high resolution is available and then falling back as necessary over and over again until a supported resolution is found, we let automatic selection do its thing. In this case, that means we will determine the desired resolution size based on the ultra high resolution preset, then define what is called a resolution strategy. A resolution strategy defines the resolution selection sequence used to select the best resolution size when the desired resolution can't be used. To construct a resolution strategy, we need to define a bound size and a fallback rule. So in this case, the bound size will be the resolution that we want, 3840 by 2160. Then we need to set a fallback rule, which is the rule to follow when the specified bound size is not available. In every case of resolution selection, the camera plugin targets the desired resolution first and then falls back to the next highest resolution. However, if a lower resolution is impossible, then we're open to looking at higher resolutions to avoid a failure. So with that philosophy in mind, we chose the fallback rule closer, lower than higher out of those available. From there, we construct what's called a resolution selector. The resolution selector automatically selects a resolution for us based on the strategy that we specified. The resolution selector represents Camera X's promise to perform a best effort attempt to target your specified resolution based on the defined resolution strategy and what Camera X knows about the user's device. Gone are the days of guessing the best resolution that a device may support and potentially getting a lower resolution image than you needed. On top of navigating device capabilities, you might have to handle camera bugs that are device specific. This brings us to the second big perk you'll get from Camera X, all the fixes for device quirks. There are so many different Android devices, so even with automatic selection achieving completely consistent fallback behavior across devices, camera experiences can still differ due to differences in hardware. For example, on some devices, the flash may not work as expected or capture sessions may not close properly. Camera X helps you handle device quirks that come up. This is important because if you don't consider how your app may behave differently across devices for your users, the quality of your app can be impacted. Device quirks also inform another large class of issues that y'all flat for the Camera 2 plugin. For example, this issue where on some devices, capturing a photo takes so long that the flash may fire before the picture is actually taken, resulting in blurry or dark images. This particular issue happens to be Flutter Android's most popular camera issue. 
And wouldn't you know, this is just one of the many device quirks that Camera X has addressed. These device quirk fixes included with Camera X are great because one, plugin maintainers who aren't camera experts like me won't have to worry about handling these one-offs ourselves and risk making the wrong trade-offs, potentially impacting devices that our apps can run on. And two, with the help of Camera X Lab testing, there is continuous testing done across many devices and API levels for device-specific inconsistencies. That means quirks just like Flash Too Slow can be proactively addressed. It's Camera X's promise to do its best to maintain consistent and reliable behavior wherever your app runs. And with the power of automatic selection and fixes for device quirks, it does just that. By opting into the Camera X plugin for your Flutter app, you'll spend less time and effort on figuring out the camera and more time focusing on just building your app. You'll be able to trust more than ever that your users are going to get reliable and dare I say, picture perfect camera experiences wherever they run your app. So what are you waiting for? You should have already ran to your terminal to upgrade your camera plugin dependency. But if not, no worries, let's head there now. The latest camera plugin version uses the Camera X plugin by default. So if you haven't been using the camera plugin, you can add it with Flutter Pub Add Camera. Once you're done installing the package, head to pub.dev for a good place to get started using the plugin. If you have been using the camera plugin, you'll need to upgrade to the latest version with Flutter Pub Upgrade Major Versions Camera. And that's it. The Camera 2 plugin and the Camera X plugin have complete feature parity, so there are no additional changes needed on your end. Oh, and one more thing. You keen-eyed developers might have noticed that the code we used to select a resolution in the Camera X plugin was written in Dart. That's because the entire plugin implementation is now written in Dart. Of course, Flutter plugin implementations are open source and always have been, but by writing the plugin in Dart, we're hoping to open the floor to even more feedback and contributions from the Flutter and Dart communities, especially from folks who may not be familiar with native Android development. We always welcome contributions and are hoping that this full Dart implementation will help make the plugin more approachable for our community of awesome open source contributors. Finally, listening to your feedback help to inform us on the issues with the Camera 2 plugin and led us to prioritizing Camera X support. So as always, please feel free to leave us any feedback that you have on the Camera X plugin when you get a chance to try it out. We would love to know if you love the plugin as much as we do, if you encounter any issues, or if there's any Camera X specific features you'd like to see supported. The best way to give us feedback is to file issues on GitHub under the Flutter Flutter repository. Well, it's time for me to go. It's been an honor getting to tell you about how Flutter and Camera X are bringing more consistent and reliable camera experiences to your Flutter app. I hope that this talk has helped you learn about all the benefits your users will get from using the Camera X plugin. I can't wait to see you all try it out. I'm telling you, it will be picture perfect. Have a good one. Bye.